Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the How Good Is series. The series where we take something new, put into a Call of Duty game, and answer the question, how good is it? As you can probably tell by the gameplay here, we are looking at the new sniper rifle put into Black Ops 4 called the Locus. Now, real quickly, before we dive into the stats, the best class setups, and answering the question, how good is the Locus, I just need a couple pieces of housekeeping. First of all, the gameplay you're watching here is my gameplay, but I don't actually have the Locus. I'm kind of refusing to support the reserve system they currently have in Black Ops 4, so I'm not just not spending any money on it. If you guys don't like the system, I recommend you do the same thing. So I don't have the Locus. However, you guys are absolutely incredible. When I tweeted out and put it on the discord asking if i could use someone's locust i got a ton of people asking saying hey you can use my account and seriously you guys are incredible thank you for all the support always you are absolutely amazing so this is my gameplay but the other piece of housekeeping i'm not that great of a sniper i'm not 360 no scoping people i'm not pulling off some crazy kill feeds but it is pretty good maybe a little bit above average sniper gameplay i can hold my own keep a good kill death and i can definitely look at the stats of the weapon and answer the question how good is it so without further ado let's dive in and start looking at the stats for the locust so, as far as the Locust goes, Black Ops 4 is actually not the first game to host this weapon. The first game is, as you're seeing on screen here, Black Ops 3. And in that game, the Locust was kind of like the go-to sniper rifle in that game. It wasn't the most powerful, but all around, it kind of had some pretty decent stats. Now, the Locust was recently brought back into Black Ops 4 as a weapon that is only available in reserves. So, with sniper rifles, like any other weapon in Black Ops 4, the two most important stats are the damage and the fire rate. However, damage is something a little bit different on sniper rifles, especially bolt-action sniper rifles, because it's not necessarily how much damage it does number-wise, it's where is the one-shot kill. And when we're looking at the Locus, the one-shot kill area is from the belly button and up, and on the arms, it goes down to the elbows. Now, if you don't know stats for other weapons, you don't know exactly where that falls. So, this damage area is the exact same damage area as the Koshka using high caliber one. The important thing to note is that the Locus doesn't have any high caliber attachments. So because of that, this is the only area where you're going to be able to get a one bullet kill. Now compared to the Paladin, the Paladin has a much larger one hit kill area, but only when using high caliber two. So high caliber two is a really, really strong attachments on sniper rifles that is unfortunately not available on the Locus. So as far as how good is this one shot kill area, Area, it's actually pretty good especially considering the fact that you don't need to waste an attachment on a high caliber to have the same one shot kill area as the Koshka so not bad pretty good but not as good as the Paladin now another cool thing about the damage of the Locust is that you actually don't really need FMJ even if your enemies are using body armor unlike the other sniper rifles most of the other sniper rifles body armor will stop you from getting that one shot kill but with the Locust it does not it actually goes right through it and you still still kill the enemy. The only situation where FMJ will actually make a difference is if your enemy has 200 health and they have body armor on. That is the only time where FMJ is actually going to do anything good for you. Now, next up, we have fire rate, and fire rate's important on sniper rifles for two reasons. First of all, if you miss your first shot, you can get a follow-up shot in quicker if the fire rate is better. But on top of that, if you are a god-tier sniper and don't miss any shots, the faster the fire rate, the faster you can get that second kill and get that sweet, sweet kill feed. So as far as the fire rate of the Locust, without rapid fire, you are looking at 56 RPM. And then with rapid fire, you are looking at 70 RPM. Now, as far as a bolt action sniper goes, that's predominantly a one hit kill. This is a really good fire rate. In fact, it's the best out of any of the bolt actions, not including the outlaw, because I don't really count that as a bolt action. But without rapid fire, it beats both the Paladin and the Koshka. And then with rapid fire, it really blows them out of the water so if we compare it to a weapon like the koshka that has the same area to kill with high caliber but the rate of fire is better on the locust it's pretty easy to just call the locust a better version of the koshka aka the better koshka 
Believe it or not, this is not the only area where the Locust excels. If we look at the magazine size of the Locust, it's 8 rounds without extended mags and 12 rounds with extended mags. That is better than both the Paladin and the Koshka without extended mags, and neither the Paladin nor the Koshka have extended mags available as a possible attachment. After this, we have reload speed, and the base reload speed for the Locust is 2.24 seconds, which is actually the slowest out of the three snipers we've been talking about. However, if you put on fast mags, it drops down to 1.22 seconds, which is exactly the same as both of the other snipers with fast mags as well. Now, the last two stats that we have are the sprint out time and the aim down sights time. And the aim down sights time is kind of weird at 367 milliseconds. This is just kind of odd because it's not really like an even number or anything. It's actually the best out of both the Koshka and the Paladin. However, it doesn't have quick draw like the Koshka does. Then also the sprint out time is also best in class at 250 milliseconds. And if you use gung-ho, that drops down to 200 milliseconds. Now, throughout this video, I may have sounded a bit like a broken record saying that a lot of the Locus's stats are better than both the Paladin and the Koshka, and that's simply because they are. It's pretty crazy how many really good stats this has for a one-shot kill sniper rifle. Now, moving on from stats, let's next look at attachments, as that's very important for any weapon. Now, as far as the attachments go for the Locus, I don't think they're incredible, but starting off with the optics, there's a lot available. There is the Recon Scope, Iron Sights, ELO, Threat Detector, Reflex Sight, and finally, the NVIR, aka the Thermal Scope. And honestly, I tried out a bunch of these, and the best one is just use the Sniper Scope that comes with the weapon. I definitely think it's the best option you have and even to quick scope or anything else it's just by far the easiest to use at least in my opinion now after this we have the regular attachments and honestly there's not too many available for this sniper rifle and it's missing some ones that would really make this weapon amazing but the ones we do have are fast mags fmj stock stabilizer extended mags rapid fire and suppressor and as far as all of these attachments goes there are right but there's ones that could be better for example high caliber would be insane on this weapon and on top of that i think quick draw would make this weapon just over the top good so that's pretty probably why they're not available. So now the next thing I wanted to look at is a best class setup. I'm actually going to give you two different classes depending on which kind of sniper you are. If you're like me, you kind of sit back a little more, don't rush around quite as much, but still like to get into a good amount of gunfights. So for this, I like to use rapid fire, stabilizer, and extended mags. Stabilizer makes it easier for you to aim as it reduces idle sway. Rapid fire makes it so if I miss a shot, I can follow up with a second shot pretty quickly. And extended mags makes it so I can get in gunfights frequently and not have to constantly reload now the reason why i don't use fast mags is because generally with a sniper i'm further back so if i'm getting close to the end of the magazine i'll just find some cover reload and then get back into action now, as far as when an enemy gets up close and personal, that is why I use the Strife. I find the Strife to be the most consistent secondary weapon, and honestly, it's a pretty good weapon. Now, I still do use Stimshot because I still like getting into the action, and I just find that it's definitely the best piece of gear. And then for perks, I'm always using Engineer, Gung Ho, and Dead Silence. This is the same on any class, any weapons in this game. It just kind of stays consistent for me. Now, the second class is very similar to the first class. The main difference is that this one is designed for players who are only going to be using their sniper rifle because they quick scope and want to be in as many gunfights as possible to get those sweet, sweet feeds. The only difference here is we get rid of the strife, get rid of dead silence, and add in fast mags. That way you can reload faster in between gunfights with your enemies. It's not really necessary with a 12-round magazine. However, if you really are going for those sweet feeds, you might need it. And on top of that, you're not going to need a secondary weapon, so it's just kind of a waste of a spot in your class. So this wraps up the breakdown of this weapon, but it leads to the question, how good is the Locust? And it's not an easy answer because it's not really going to be as consistent as the Paladin with high caliber one and high caliber two. There is no high caliber attachment available for the Locust to make it better. There's no quick draw to make it better, but the base stats are all really good, really good damage, really good fire rate. And even the little stats like aim down sights, time, sprint out, that kind of thing are really good as well on this weapon. And what this comes down to is it's not going to replace the Paladin because the Paladin has that really consistent one-shot kill with high cal. However, 
This weapon is simply a better version of the Koshka in almost every single way you can imagine. The only thing that's better for the Koshka is it has quick draw and can have a faster aim down sights time. And I guess you could talk about the Operator mod as well. But other than that, this weapon is better in every single way than the Koshka. So it's pretty good. It, it, I gotta give it like a 7 out of 10. It's not perfect weapon. It's not always going to be a one-shot kill, but... It is good in every facet that a sniper rifle can be good. And like I said, if quick draw was available and if high cow was available, this thing would be absolutely god tier. But ladies and gentlemen, that is my answer to how good is the Locust. If you're one of the other seven people who have got lucky enough to get this thing out of reserves, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and like what you see here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications turned on. And as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, peace out. We are